I'm going to start the recording now. I want to welcome everyone to the COVID-19 Global, Solidar Global Solidarity Coalition's session at the World Social Forum. We're really pleased to have everyone here. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm just going to provide a quick introduction, then turn things over to fabulous members of our coalition, who include Irene Bisvardi, Rhonda Sirhan, Harry Kaysen, Peter Kuznick, Sunshine Chie Miyagi, and Naomi Machiba. Uh, let me just say, uh, we're gonna each speak for about five minutes and then open things up for conversation, for discussion, for questions. The focus of our event today is try to just to give you a brief background about the COVID-19 Global Solidarity Coalition and its manifesto, and then tell you about some of our upcoming initiatives and then brainstorm together and discuss together how we and allied organizations, allied individuals can make the demands of our COVID-19 Global Solidarity Manifesto realities. If you have questions at any point, feel free to use the chat box. Uh, you can also, we'll ask people to unmute themselves, um, but you can share questions or comments at any point during the presentations. With that, let me turn things over to Irene Visvardi and Rhonda Sirhan. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. My, my name is Irene Visbardi. I'm an academic in, in classics, and I live in Connecticut in the US. Uh, but right now, I'm in, I'm in Greece. Um, so um, myself, uh, what I'm going to do is, is give you a little bit of our background, our, our history, and then I will turn it over to the rest uh, of our members here to talk about specific projects and upcoming events and initiatives as, as David just mentioned. Um, so myself and the small group here today um, uh, represents a much larger group of people that came to be the COVID-19 Global Solidarity Coalition. And uh, numerous members of that group from around the world uh, first came together online uh, last March when we went into lockdown and we were in isolation uh, and in shock about uh, the state of the world. And uh, David Vine uh, invited us, started us off, and we're all grateful for that, and we still are. And um, at that point, we shared our experiences on the personal uh, front, um, uh, but also how we saw those experiences uh, tying to the social and political environments we each found ourselves in. And what emerged very quickly was, uh, first of all, that we were invested in staying connected across geographic borders, across color, gender, sexual orientation, age, languages, all those sort of labels that keep us apart conventionally. But we also realized that we were all committed to social and economic equality, peace, environmental sustainability, essentially a number of causes um, that build on a genuine and sustained cooperation, but also go against long established uh, structures across the world. Um, so it was this commitment that led us to put together a manifesto and I'm going to share it with you um, here um, right now. Let me see, I hope. Um, it's not, of course, now it's not letting me do it. Let me see. Um, so, um, can you all see, see it? Yep. Um, and um, so we put together um, this, this manifesto um, and you can find it on our website that, uh, that David, I think, will, uh, will share. Um, on the chat with you, and also um, the, the manifesto is, is in multiple uh, languages there. Uh, and I'm going to read it, uh, to read it, to read through, through it uh, right now. You can all look at it, but I'm just going to showcase a couple of the demands here. And you will see, for instance, an, under number three, that we are talking, we are asking for um, uh, uh, under, um, sorry, under number two, we are asking for uh, a global ceasefire um, and also uh, for diverting military funds to um, a different, different types of spending that actually aim at true care. Uh, and of course, we're talking about healthcare, housing, childcare, education, and much more. 
or under number three, we talk um, about how we are asking for changes that will take us away from the unsustainable capitalist economies of, uh, across the world, and then sort of um, um, turn to projects that have to do with the conservation of the environment, uh, biodiversity, and, and sort of more broadly um, combating uh, climate change. Um, so you can see you can see some of our of our demands here. And what we really want to do today is essentially uh, tell you a little more about what we have been doing. But more importantly, we want to talk with different people about how we can take some of our projects and our ideas to new spaces and and in new in new directions. Um, and just you know, just with that, I will turn it over to to Randa. Thank you, Irene. Um, I'm Rhonda Serhan. I am currently in Washington, DC. I'm a sociologist and I spend a lot of time in Lebanon as well. And so for today, I would just like to take a few minutes to introduce everybody um, to some of our core members or our most active members. And by um, no means is this exclusive, you know, um, exhaustive. So I would like to share uh, a map with where we are and I, you know and you will see that quite a few of us are in the northeast of the united states however um oh yeah can, uh, Irene, can you stop sharing so i can share um i i did okay sorry so um a lot of us are in the northeast however um most of us do and have initiatives and are involved in initiatives in other countries and across the globe. And so I, in a second, once I figure this out, you'll be able to see the map. Um, okay, here we go. There we go. All right, I will share it right now. Okay, and I, I won't start with the US, I'll start with Japan. And, okay, great. Can everybody see this? I think so, yeah. All right. So in Japan, we have, and she's here today, uh, Sunshine Chi Miyagi in Ganawan, um, Okinawa. She is the author of Letter from Okinawa and the Hinoko Blue, uh, she's part of the Hinoko Blue Kayak team. Oops. All right. And then we have John Rachel. Um, he's part of the J Japan Peace Dividend uh, Project, and his, his causes are ending hyper-militarism and American imperialism. And Satoko. Satoko's uh, bi-local. She's in Vancouver and Tokyo, and she's the director of the Peace, Peace, uh, sorry, Peace Philosophy Center, and you'll see her in North America as well. And moving on, we will go to Australia. And in Australia, we have more than one member, but the main one is Adam Bernowski, and he's in Canberra. He's, he's um, an advocate of anti-imperialism, anti-militarism, social and eco social ecological transformation, and left solidarity. And you'll see some repetition in a lot of these, All right? And let's go to North America where you'll see a lot more dots. Again, Satoko, uh, she's in Vancouver, like I said, in Tokyo. She, um, her causes are historical justice, peace and the peace museum movement. Next, we've got Irene Vasvardi, who you already met. She's a professor of classics and um, is an advocate of prison education in the United States. Rachel Clark. New York, nuclear abolition, military industrial complex, in industrial congressional think tank academia, Wall Street complex. And she wants us to all know that the complex has grown and we need to be aware of it and afraid. And Sarah Block, Sarah Block's from New York City, and she works on displacement um, caused by gentrification. And she advocates for immigrant rights through an anti imperialist um, approach. Harry Kaysen, who's also with us today, also in New York. Um, he believes in, he, he's actually actively, you'll hear a little bit later, working on building a cooperative left social system, and he wants to promote a left vision. David Vine, um, who brought us together, Washington, DC. He is an author of a recent book, The United States of War, A Global History of America's Endless Conflicts from Columbus to the Islamic State. And he's part of the Overseas Base Realignment. 
Peter Kuznick um, g gave us the shortest description, but it probably has the most extensive work of us all. Um, and he's, his causes are nuclear abolition, anti-war, and um, anti-empire. Adrian Pine, Washington, DC, destroying capitalism and imperialism and building a community instead. Abigail Morris, Washington, DC, harm reduction and demilitarization. And um, then there's me, Rhonda Serhan, Washington, DC, anti-war and justice for all, no exceptions, no matter who these people are that you may not like. All right, so that is it for me. Um, and I, give you back to David. Hopefully it'll give you some sense. But as I said, these aren't exclusive. Um, this isn't all of us, there's more, but it gives you a sense of who we are. And I'm turning it over to David. Thank you, Dave. David. Thank you so much, Rhonda. <clears throat> Let me just again, give you a quick sense of, of some of our upcoming initiatives begin to. Um, so we, we've already begun a series of webinars. Uh, the first was focused on Julian Assange, in his case, shortly before the, the ruling in his case, in fact, um, a fantastic webinar that was viewed by thousands, both live and uh, the, the video afterwards. Um, we have a plan for a series of webinars that will follow. The first uh, will focus on issues of war and empire and will be held on the 18th anniversary of the US invasion and war in Iraq, the most recent uh, of the several US wars on Iraq, of course. Um, so that'll be on the 20th of March uh, in a couple months. Uh, future webinars are designed to focus on issues including sanctions, including sanctions that have been imposed on Venezuela and Iran, uh, as well as nuclear abolition among other topics. Uh, I did want to offered just one other, really this is uh, a, a possible future project um, that I have been wanting to share with others and, and float. Uh, as many of you know, in the United States in particular, there's a phrase, thank you for your service that is future, frequently uttered uh, to ostensibly thank members of the military for fighting. Um, I think members of the military themselves often don't like this phrase very much, but it's become, for those who aren't US-based, it's become very uh, pervasive. Uh, some you know, members of the military would say, you know, if you really wanna thank us, stop sending us to go fight more wars um, and end the wars that are ongoing. Uh, so it, it, it's occurred to me that, that for a variety of reasons, it might be effective to try to launch something of a, a global campaign to begin to say thank you for your service or something similar to people who perhaps are at very least equally deserving of thanks. That is teachers, nurses, doctors, other health professionals, um, legal aid, lawyers, uh, social workers among teachers, among many, many others. It always bothered me that, you know, why are we just thanking members of the military for their service? Why aren't we thanking childcare providers, teachers, nurses, and, and others? Um, who in the COVID age, I think their, their work has gained greater recognition, but still in many places is, is far, um, is dramatically underpaid and undervalued. Um, so it occurred to me that, that perhaps something of a campaign to thank them for their service in an effort to elevate the regard with which people hold those professions, especially in places like the United States where um, where they are, as I said, undervalued, that that might be valuable with the ultimate aim of not just thanking them, but boosting their salary, for example, their working conditions, um, and beginning to undermine some of the, what I would call a sort of overvalorization of members of the military. Again, in the United States in particular, but you see this elsewhere, members of the military are held in a regard, um, often in a sort of uh, godlike way. Um, as part of a larger processes of militarization and militarism. Um, they are held up as sort of the ultimate of, of citizenship. Um, and while members of the military do deserve thanks and do des deserve high levels of regard, especially because they put their lives at risk. And in, in my mind, and I think the minds of many members of our coalition are themselves victim, victims of a, a larger war machine. Uh, 
anything we could do to, to lessen the celebration of war that often accompanies this kind of unthinking thanks uh, could, could be helpful as part of much larger uh, movements to break down the system of war that one finds in the United States in particular, but that is of course a, a global uh, war system as well. Uh, so these are just a few of the ideas. Um, let me turn things over now to Peter Kuznick, who will talk a little bit more about nuclear abolition in particular and how that intersects with the work of the coalition. Peter, we will just need you to unmute. Go for it, Peter. Can you hear me now? Yep. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Can, can you can hear me? Yes. Can hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, okay, I started to say to myself, apparently, that uh, we face two major existential threats that the coalition is trying to deal with. One is global warming, and the other is nuclear warfare. Today's an important day for two reasons. One, Two days ago, the UN Nuclear Ban Treaty went into effect. This was the, the first treaty that declares that nuclear weapons are illegal. The treaty prohibits possession, development, production, deployment, testing, use, threatening to use, and stationing abroad of nuclear weapons for any states that are party to the treaty. The treaty was ratified back in 2017, it was passed 122 non-nuclear weapon states of the United Nations, representing two thirds of the UN membership, uh, uh, signed it, uh, or, or passed it, deliberated on it, 84 signed it, only the Netherlands voted against it, and but it required 50 countries to ratify it officially before it went into effect. That happened three, 90 days ago, 92 days ago now. So it went into effect two days ago. Today is the 75th anniversary of the UN General Assembly's adoption of its very first resolution. And that first UN resolution establishes a commission to ensure, quote, the elimination from national armaments of atomic weapons and all other major weapons uh, of mass destruction. The delicious irony in all of this is the fact that the final ratification vote was cast by Honduras, the original banana republic, whose government took power in a US backed coup. Now 52 countries have ratified it and we're trying to get more. Uh, the importance of this is more symbolic in some ways. It stigmatizes the countries that have nuclear weapons. There are nine nuclear weapon states now, all of which boycotted the proceedings. Not only that, but the United States strong-armed all of the NATO countries and other allies to boycott the proceedings. Two, more than two thirds of the world's countries participated, but not the NATO countries, not the United States or the other nuclear powers. In fact, the United States sent a letter to the signers urging them to de-ratify, to rescind their ratifications, saying that this is a step back from nuclear arms control and nuclear abolition, not toward it. This was purely, really, really outrageous. The, the implications of this is that all the countries who are signing this are doing so after a series of UN conferences on the humanitarian impacts of nuclear weapons that were held in 2013 and 2014. Because what people realize around the world is that in the event of nuclear war, the countries that are affected are not only the ones that are hit with nuclear weapons, but everybody. The latest studies about nuclear winter show 
that a limited nuclear war between, uh, between India and Pakistan, in which 100 Hiroshima-sized nuclear weapons were used, would send up 5 million tons of smoke and soot into the atmosphere. They'd circle the stratosphere, uh, block the sun's rays, temperatures on Earth would plummet below freezing, and even that limited nuclear war would result in up to 2 billion deaths all over the world, not just in India and Pakistan, most of them outside India and Pakistan. So this is why everybody's got a stake in this. The reality is there's not 100 nuclear weapons in the world. There's still 13,400 nuclear weapons in the world. They're not, they're not, they're not in Hiroshima size. They're between seven and 70 times the size of the Hiroshima weapon. So that's what we're facing as a global species. The US and Russia have more than 90% of those nuclear weapons. And where Biden, despite Biden is very progressive on a lot of domestic policies, but if we look at the people who he's brought into his administration to deal with foreign policy, these people are very strongly confrontationalist when it comes to Russia. So the chances of improving US relations with Russia or China are certainly not guaranteed right now. They're pretty bleak. So we have our work cut out for us. We want to educate about these issues. We want to help organize about these issues. We want to see the UN ban treaty, nuclear ban treaty succeed. And that's part of what we're doing as a coalition. Thanks. Thank you so much, Peter. Really helpful and important. Let me turn things over now to Harry Kaysen. Uh, you can hear me. Yep. Okay, great. Um, well, I had uh, I really planned for a much longer talk than five minutes, but I want to do my best. Uh, there's a lot to be said. Um, uh, what I wanted to emphasize and, and um, promote uh, is the idea that demands are great. We got to put forth our demands, we, and we can't put enough demands out there. But and we uh, our our manifestos are ringing with demands and. and uh, I, I got particularly interested in uh, the third demand, which uh, uh, you all had a chance to look at. It, it has to do with our economy. Um, but it's not enough to, to just make demands uh, upon our uh, authorities, the, the authorities that run our political system, which happen to be mostly right, uh, almost all right wing people. So, uh, so um, what we have to do as well not just put forth demands, but we also have to put forth a vision. And I think and if that vision cannot sell itself to the public, uh, then obviously we've got a, a serious problem because what if we were to gain power and we can't, uh, no one agrees with the vision. So let's talk about the vision. Uh, I, and there's no reason why people wouldn't love it if they um, uh, could ex think briefly that it's possible. Uh, uh, so, um, without putting forth a vision, the left uh, finds itself living and playing in the right's ideological arena. They set the ground rules by saying, well, um, uh, uh, competition uh, uh, for survival is the only natural way of being. Uh, and we argue, of course, that no, uh, cooperation is just as possible, just as capable. So um, a, a, a universally promoted alternative left vision provides us with added ideological grounds from which to better compete with the right by forcing them onto our terrain. As we have said, uh, making demands or suggestions to the far right um, uh, is not sufficient. So then the left must heavily, and I really wanna emphasize this, the left must heavily emphasize and systematically begin to systematically promote an alternative vision. And I'm gonna talk about that alternative vision in a second. Uh, including the positive results that would emerge from, from uh, a cooperative society in the realm of survival, a cooperative society in the realm of survival. Now, uh, the competition uh, is, is okay in certain areas, but not in the realm of, of, of economics and in the realm of surviving. Uh, competition is okay in the realm of ideas. We can discuss, debate, and have different ideas about how to do things better. Uh, we can uh, 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 talk about uh, the sports is a great place to get our uh, uh, competitive edge out there. Um, cultural expression is fine, but when it comes to survival, no. This is this this is uh, this has to be put to an end. 
for example, we can and do at times demonstrate the social and economic improvements that we could make if we were to follow the cooperative path of equal access of resources to uh, uh, equal access to resources for all. Um, we could save nearly half of our resources every year uh, that are instead expanded, uh, expended on war, preparing for war and cleaning up for war. Uh, so let's consider the basic character of a cooperative society in the realm of survival in comparison to the cooperative uh, competitive society. The, com the cooperative society is a, is a voluntary society that, uh, uh, that obliges one to cooperate and contribute since uh, you have or one has cooperatively agreed to do so. Significantly, the cooperative society is a life-affirming society, whereas the competitive society is an enormous death throne. Just look at today's world and where we are today, and, and especially its history. Disturbingly, we now have the capacity to destroy ourselves, as Peter was, was speaking about, speaking of, uh, including the ecosphere, even though nuclear war, uh, either through nuclear war and environmental destruction. Uh, now, it has only been in recent times that we've had such a capacity, and given a bit more time, the doomsday clock will surely run out, as Peter was suggesting. Uh, we, we must recognize that this potential development for omnicide is a product of the competitive survival society. It is a product of what we have. Uh, but with cooperative su survival as our guide, our chances, for uh, uh, our chances for surviving become much, much better. So, um, for example, we the left cannot continue to allow the environmental destruction that is unsustainable, and this is uh, key, unsustainable, endless growth um, uh, that competitive society requires. And yes, there are things that competitive society requires, and this is one of them, uh, endless growth, which is, is, is leading to, to the, to the um, constant um, um, degradation of, of, of of the resources of this planet and uh, ultimately just um, total destruction of, of the uh, environment and, and the resources that we have by through consumption, uh, just endless, 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 endless consumption. Um, uh, now, this is where uh, our positive pro propaganda to the great mass of people in the world su surpasses the elevation and use of, of demands. Competitive survival ultimately requires the destruction of our planet. And, Making demands will not solve this problem. I recommend a book to you, Green Capitalism. Uh, so let's uh, let's go further into outlining the cooperative society. Well, a national this would uh, uh, as a left alternative, uh, a national and global commitment would be made to everyone by everyone that competitive survival to be uh, is to be replaced with the positive cooperative survival of the uh, um, the cooperative survival that the left promotes. Um, uh, uh, accordingly, a national and global commitment is made to everyone by everyone, is made to everyone by everyone that going forward, we each receive equal access to all social resources based on our needs, based on our particular needs. At the same time, we collectively determine what our general needs are and somewhat similar to Rawls, uh, John Rawls's veil of ignorance. If you, uh, we can talk about that later if you're not familiar with John Rawls' veil of ignorance. For everyone assenting to the two above commit, uh, commitments, they further commit to everyone equally giving their best effort to contribute to the production of and of all the various social resources we need. For those refusing to join the cooperative system, they will be left to fend for themselves, but it is obvious that the new cooperative system could not and will not work or be implemented until a high percentage of the public support it. Uh, this is where we come in. What the left needs to do is to collectively Harry, and uniform. Yeah. Harry, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, just because we only do have an hour in total and you do have an event coming up, maybe you could tell everyone when the event is going to be held and then you could go into some of the additional detail in the discussion and q and if, if that's where our discussion goes. But maybe you can uh, tell everyone when the event is and how, how they can get involved and learn more. Well, we were just getting to the good part. Uh, but um, uh, uh, so, um, uh, well, sorry, uh, this, this will if be I may just interrupt very quickly. Uh, the, the schedule actually has two hours for this time slot. So if we go a little over an hour, I think it should be okay. Uh, I'm not sure whose Zoom room this is, but at least in terms of the schedule we had prepared, uh, we have a two hour slot for this. Oh, month. that's great. Yeah, we, we, we do have plenty of time on the Zoom room. Great. Hoorah, hoorah. <laughs> hoorah for the 
But yeah, Harry, why don't, why, don't you, why don't you just um, give everyone the information about when when the event is and how they can register to, to participate and learn more? Well, I thought I would do that at the end of, of what I was uh, discussing, or especially when we discuss things. But, uh, but let me let me do it at the end. Okay. I, I, um, so we, we have plenty of time, and and um, um, this is um, I I put a lot of time and effort into this, and and I really would like to. This is the most important part we're coming to. Um, uh, well, so, maybe maybe you um, can can keep it down to a minute or two and then we could turn things over to Sunshine and Naomi who've been waiting and are up at 5.30 in the morning. Okay, well, um, all right, so, um, uh, well, I, I guess it's not, uh, I'll, I'll just uh, mention that we're having an event. Um, um, it's, we're titling it a uh, global, a uh, new global, um, compact um it's a lofty goal it's a uh, laudable goal and it's a long-term goal but we're trying to work with groups internationally uh to bring these groups together to discuss the possibilities of what a future um, um something along the lines that i was wanting to lay out here uh, would be like what our future could be so um um so that's um uh uh, we, I'll, it, it's going to be on the 28th of, of January. Um, if you leave me in the chat uh, section, you're interested in, we'd really like to have um, other groups. Well, we, we plan to have other groups um, uh, join uh, in. Right now we have four different groups that we're going to bring together and, uh, and have those discussions about um, the, the, Political possibilities of the of the of an international future and new global compact. So, um, we'll um, uh, if you if you're interested, we'd love for you to join us uh, at some time in the future, um, uh, as far as um, being a participant in discussing your, who you are, what you're doing, and what your ideas and and what your uh, strategies are for building a better world. So. Um, uh, uh, I'll leave it at that. Thank you so much, Harry. For anyone joining us right now, uh, please do leave your email address in the chat box and we will make sure to get you information about the event that Harry is helping to coordinate. If you're watching later, not live, uh, you can also go to our website, www.covidglobalsolidarity.org, www.covid globalsolidarity.org, where you'll find information about the event that Harry was referring to and describing and upcoming events, including the webinar series I mentioned. Let me now turn things over to Sunshine and Naomi. Hi. Hello. Uh, I'm Sunshine, and I introduce one of my best friends. Hey! <laughs> Hi, Tai. I'm from the Okinawa city of Okinawa, which is a city of the 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 the city of the 有機野菜や三着豚などあの、皆さんに体にいい食べ物を提供したいなと思って頑張ってたんですが、えっと、肝心のその水道水が、え、出水されてるところが、ギノワ、え、カデナの、え、基地の、え、出水地域からピーホス
I knew I wanted to uh, go for healthy food, but uh, I found out the our water is polluted by PFOS from the Cadena Air Base and Ftema Base. So now I'm involved of the, uh, the association to protect the lives of citizens from polluted water, PFOS water. しかも汚染はカデナ基地だけではなくて、えー、普天間基地も同様で、貴重な湧き水が汚染され、えー、地域の農業用水に被害が及んでいます。カフェの,あの野菜を作っていただいている自然農法の田んぼも先祖代々の土地が被害に遭い、彼らは今、どうやって農業を続けられるか模索して苦しんでいます。えー、米軍は沖縄統治の時、水源地の土地を奪って基地にしました。そして汚染し続けました。戦争や基地は最大の環境破壊です。The, uh, the Cadena Air Force and the Ftema Marico US, both US bases polluted the water and、uh, some of my,、uh, my farmers、uh, uh, who offering the food the product.、Uh, Suffering from the polluted water, and they were their、uh, ancestors' land were expropriated by U.S. forces, and uh, uh, U.S. bases、uh, were our most worst destroyers. 基地の立ち入り調査や住民の健康調査などいろいろ求めていますが。日米地位協定が前に立ちはだかって、米軍はやりたい放題です。私たち、えー、命を守る連絡会は、この実態を広く県民にしてもらうため、えー、水のアンケート調査を県民に広,広く訴えつつ、この状況を伝えたいと思って活動しています。We have been asking for investigation and health check of citizens, but Japan US Uh, status force agreement broke our movement, and the、uh, uh, US military do all they want to do here in Okinawa. アンケート調査には、えー、妊婦さんや子供子供小さい子供を抱えたのはさんやお母さんたちを中心に、えー、仲間と一緒に現状を変えようと、えー、訴えています。Our association is carrying out Questionnaires in order to let the Okinawan, all Okinawan know the polluted water situation. And、uh, now, many,、uh, especially many mothers,、uh, including pregnant、uh, mothers, stood up against、uh, this polluted water. I live in the Ginovan, and I have a German city in the Jutak Chinoe. 米軍の軍事訓練の壁が爆音を毎日撒き散らして飛んでいます。毎日、日本の国の国の国の国の国の国の国の国の国の国の国の国の国の国の国の国の国の国の国の国の国の国の国の国の国の国の国の国の国の国の国の国の国の国の2017年には市内の緑ヶ丘保育園の屋根、園庭すれすれに頭上を飛ぶヘリが部品を落とし、その1週間後に近くの普天間第二小学校にヘリの大きな窓枠が落下し、運動場にいた子どもたちが被害に遭いました。両方とも飛行ルート外でした。In 2017, the US helicopters dropped a part of Helicopters onto the roof of Midoriga Okana School.、Uh, and also, one week later, the、uh, helicopter dropped a heavy a frame of windows、uh, onto the ground of Ftema Daini Elementary School. And a couple of、uh, pupils got injured. But the,、uh, both of the helicopters were flying out of routes.、Uh, and These incidents have not been investigated yet, and still、uh, those helicopters and jets are flying over the schools and nursery schools and the residents. 
その原因究明もいまだ行われてい,いません。現在でも、えー、低空飛行でヘリはその保育園や低、うん、飛行ルート外の小学校の上空を飛び続けています。The, the military jets and the helicopters are flying every day over the,、uh, the schools and nursery schools. They fly very low and so near the schools and the nursery schools. 昨日あんだけではなく、そういう状況は沖縄中にあって、空も、えー、血の水も命の危険にさらされています。Not only g i n o a n city, but also whole area in Okinawa in, in danger in the sky, in land and water. ミジェアラーランっていう言葉は沖縄の人が水を大事に汚してはいけないよと言いましまって。今しめている言葉です、えー、汚染されたフォーエーバーケミカルと言われる汚染水をどうやってきれいな水と土に戻せるのか今の科学で解決できるのか私は世界中の科学者や環境学者の人たちに教えてほしいと思いますミジェアラランイツアワンオダオキナンプロバルブスイツインリキオンランゲージエンドウォーターシュドントビシュドントビポリューティッ And、uh, I want to ask you, everyone, I want to ask you how to、uh, make our polluted water clean. And、uh, scientists,、uh, researchers of environment in the world, please teach, let us know how to make our water clean. いい方法があるのでしょうか私は、えー、教えてほしい。I want you to teach、uh, how we can protect、uh, our water、uh, and our farming to produce producing the people's life. 私の子供や孫8人を含めた、えー、沖縄の子供たちに。今の沖縄の問題を一つも解決しないまま未来を彼らに渡したくはない。私は強く決意しています。I, want, I don't want to pass on this situation to 沖縄 children, including my grand, eight grandchildren and four children.I'm determined. 沖縄を、両方総選まみれのフォーエバーケミカルからフォーエバーライフラブ私の願いです。The free from forever chemical for, to forever life and love this is my hope ありがとうございました。Thank you very much。ルチズタカラ。Right. ルチズタカラ。Right. <laughs> Life is a treasure. <laughs> thank you so much, Naomi. Thank you, Sunshine. I, I think that beautifully captures, I, I think, the inspiration for so many of us in the coalition, and I'm sure others in the audience, the desire to not pass on the world that we see around us today to our children and our grandchildren and, and future generations. So, I'd like to open things up to, to question and answer uh, and a, a larger discussion. Uh, I, I do see a, a, an initial question、um, where someone would love to hear the, what Harry was about to say.、Uh, it, it sounds like he was getting to, as he said, the good part. So, Harry, if you could give us that good part. Again,、uh, mindful that there is the event coming up in just a few days、uh, and people can learn more and get involved in, in this global compact that you're describing. Well,、um... Yeah, that's um, uh, thank you.、Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to、uh, finish this.、Um, so, what I, what I was about to say was that what the left needs to do is to collectively, uniformly support and promote a left vision. So, um, uh, uh, what would that left vision be like?、Um, uh, well, less creative work. Well, work would be done cooperatively. Rather than hierarchically. 
this is a, a tremendous break for, um, for humanity, where work is done cooperatively, not hierarchically. Less creative work would be rotated. Uh, this is the kind of world that we can build if we, if we wish, uh, making uh, most work less onerous and more fun. Most of the less creative work can be, done be give, given over to robots and made efficiently since planned obsolescence and needed wasteful um, uh, products would be eliminated, giving us more time to do what we want. Money would no longer stop human development since resources and labor are sufficiently abundant, not endlessly, but sufficiently abundant to meet human needs as we uh, at the moment. Most citizens would be highly educated, allowing for the sharing of work and the reduction of need of work by individuals to possibly two, maybe three days a week. Technology replacing labor would no longer be a threat to humanity. Conservation and clean energy would no longer be a threat to the multitude of private interests, which today generate resource uh, resistance to change. The economy would now exist in the interests of all. Production would be done at the local level, making for the uh, making uh, work subject to democracy. Uh, indeed, sustainable and humane practice in production would finally be implemented by the widespread use of economic democracy in the workplace for the first time in human history. I mean the widespread use of economic democracy in the workplace uh, for the first time in human history. So uh, uh, now um, we, can't, um, we cannot under the present conditions do these things. Competition structurally requires that most of us are losers. We, a few win big, and that's how the competition, what it creates. Competition therefore creates inequality and a war of all against all. Competition in the realm of survival cannot build a good society since the good society is built on equality, equals, equal opportunity, reason, knowledge, goodwill, and conscious, act, conscious activity, not the anarchism of competition. Competition over survival cannot create freedom since the many become subject to the wealth and power of the few. Competition cannot create the beauty of cooperation. Look at the rollout of the COVID-19 vaccine. The choice is ours. Cooperation's time has come and offers us what competition cannot, a high degree of peace and justice and a sustainable economy. We must decide this because science cannot save us from a competitive society. Science is a great tool, but it does not provide certainty. So we have to ultimately rely on ourselves. And I was going to end with uh, the words of Martin Luther King, but I'll leave it at that. So, so I appreciate the opportunity to finish that, yeah. Oh, I think uh, Dr. King's words would be appropriate if they're... Uh, well, uh, I, I would gladly read them to you. A genuine revolution of values means in the final analysis that our loyalties must become ecumenical, ecumenical rather than sectional. Every nation must now develop an overriding loyalty to mankind as a whole to, in order to preserve the best in every society. This call for a worldwide fellowship that lifts neighborly concern beyond one's tribe, race, class, and nation is in reality a call for an all-embracing and unconditional love for all mankind. And, yes. And Thank you so much, Harry. Why don't we now Thank open you. things up to questions, comments from anyone in the audience who'd like to offer some thoughts or questions of any kind. Sean, please do. Yes, uh, hello everyone, uh, again. Uh, so my question, I guess it goes back a little bit to uh, the beginning as we had the presentation, uh, a geographical map where we got a little bit of an overview of where some of the actors involved are located. Uh, one thing that we are working from uh, in the International Peace Bureau office here uh, is forming really a, an international network of those interested in peace. Uh, and with that, bringing as many people as possible into the movement from all around the globe. 
Uh, so I guess I'm, I'm wondering uh, what activities or what methods are you using to spread uh, the message of, of COVID-19 solidarity? Uh, and how, are, how uh, do you see yourself forming a wider international network with that? Thank you so much for that great and an important question. Who uh, uh, of, the, of the panelists who would like to take that on of the coalition members? Well, I, I would just add that a part, uh, part of that would be done by an effort that we're doing, which is the new global compact, an effort to uh, reach out to groups all around the world, bring a few in at a time, uh, have them meet and discuss among themselves um, and to uh, become f uh, familiar with their ideas, their goals, their, um, especially their strategies and seeing how we can um, uh, link up together. So it would, be, it would be similar to, sounds like what you're doing and we could link up with you as well, of course. Yeah. Harry, do you wanna mention some of the names of the organizations that we've been in contact with and that are gonna be participating in talking about the uh, global compacts? Well, um, uh, the, the uh, oh, international, um, all of a sudden that leaves me. Um, but um, we're working with a, a nuclear group, uh, the Manhattan Project, uh, another group um, um, dealing with um, Venezuela, hands off Venezuela, uh, another group. Um, um, uh, what well, I, 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 I keep saying IP, but I. I uh, Progressive International is another uh, a PI Progressive International. Ah, I, oh, I could, I can't believe. It. And uh, then there is um, uh, the group um, uh, Council on Hemispheric Affairs. Uh, they concentrate their work in South America, and so we're bringing these four groups together, uh, and uh, 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 we're going to do that on the twenty eighth. And um, uh, hopefully, if there if there's anyone here that would want to, to participate uh, in, in listening uh, here, listening with us today, uh, please let us know uh, with the chat or some other way, uh, uh, let us know. Uh, we, I think, uh, are, are we gonna send out an invitation to everyone, David? Um, uh, yes, um, everyone who leaves their chat in the- uh, oh, The information. In the, in the chat box. Inform yeah. And it does look like Sean is interested. So thank you, Sean. I think uh, linking up with the International Peace Bureau would be fantastic, especially given yeah, the, great, really the great. central role Sean, you played in, in organizing the, the World Social Forum. Sean, uh, I've worked with Ryder Braun in the past. I wrote something for your publication recently. Uh, and Ryder and I have spoken together at NATO events and, and other things. So. Um, it's a, from what I know about the International Peace Bureau, it's exactly the kind of, of expansive, uh, committed organization that would be sympathetic to the kinds of things that we're trying to do. So uh, yes, we'd very much like to work with you. That's wonderful to hear. Yeah, Rainer Braun is uh, yeah, in the office here, and, and I'm sure we could organize the time to, to speak with him uh, to move this uh, forward and see how we can work together. Um, one thing that may also be of interest, just to mention it, I don't want to do too much self-promotion here, but IPB is planning a large uh, International Peace Congress that will either take place in Barcelona or online this fall, depending on how things are looking with the COVID situation at that time. Um, but perhaps there's a way we can, we can also talk about uh, working towards that goal and, and how we could uh, organize something for that. Good. Yeah. If I may add that um, there's an, you know, we've been having various events and really that's where we're doing most of our recruitment because it's not clear um, who we are until people come and hear us speak. And, uh, and we've just gotten some really great people to either show up on at various meetings or sign on. And it really is um, quite, you know, like it's exciting because of all the different um, ages and people around the world. Now, Again, the map, I just want to say, uh, doesn't reflect everybody. It really um, was those who responded in a, a particular amount of time so that I can create the map, but there are people from other parts of the world. Um, and I just didn't want to use people's names without their consent. Yeah, and I, I, sh I should mention that the 
original COVID-19 Global Solidarity Manifesto has been translated into upward of 20 languages, uh, which, all of which you can find on our website, covidglobalsolidarity.org. Irene, Sunshine, Naomi, uh, did you any of you wanna respond to, to Sean's initial question? Um, I mean, you 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 covered us. I think it's it's primarily our our events where you know we invite people and sort of promoting through our own pages and the the coalition's page to to come sort of meet with us. And also there is always the um, sort of the invitation to for people who join us to take us to new directions. So and that's really important to us, sort of creating more collaborations as we go as we go forward. See if there are other questions, comments, anyone would like to offer. Heinrich, you've been another okay. member of the coalition. Um, so if you wanted to offer any thoughts as well, please do. I'm participating in the event on the 28th as well. It was my little, I'm speaking here for my small group in Berlin. I'm also based in Berlin and also uh, an event at uh, the Van Brugge on the weekends, heads of Venezuela. Heinrich? Yes. I'm, 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 I'm going to turn, turn your video off because we're having a hard time. Hard time. Okay. Try Can again. you hear me now? Right. Much better. Yeah. Right. Much better. Okay. So we got uh, we got this weekly event here in Berlin with the coalition hands of Venezuela. It's like two years. We are every weekend at the Brandenburg Gate and uh, have members from various countries in Latin America and I think some cultural events around that too. And uh, I'm speaking for that group. And at the moment, we also just started a campaign with uh, World Beyond War. And uh, Roger Waters is also participating in it with some banners here in Berlin about the 22nd of uh, January, the abolition of nuclear weapons. And so I'm going to speak for that too a little bit. And it's, I think it's a good way to connect to people also in this uh, movement here, which I met in back in March when I was doing a declaration in solidarity also with, with China and this whole uh, COVID drama that uh, evolved at that time and the lockdown. And uh, I was happy to join up at that time with uh, the coalition here. And since then I'm participating once in a while. And it's a very good, very good meeting today. I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much, Heinrich. Uh, Other... Sean, I, uh, I just wanted to say to Sean that I will let uh, my close friend in Spain know about this uh, meeting in Barcelona. Definitely. Uh, he, and he will get it spread around too. Yeah. And, and in fact, he's really a, a member of the group as well, of our group. Uh, also Paco. Paco, that's who I'm referring to, yeah. Yeah, Francisco, yeah. Great, that's wonderful, thank you. Uh, and, uh, feel free to send him my email as well. He can get in contact with me. Oh, okay. Other questions or comments from, from anyone? Uh, and in fact, um, please feel free to, to speak in any language. One of the challenges of an international group, uh, which we are, um, of course, is, is the issue of translation. And unfortunately, English has been our dominant language for the history of the group, which is now almost a, almost a year old, actually. Um, but it's one of the persistent problems, especially as a group that is operating on an entirely volunteer basis uh, with no funding. Um, but uh, anyone uh, who would like to, to speak now and share some thoughts or offer questions in any language, um, please feel free.
Maybe as people are thinking, maybe I could ask Sean whether um, I, I have not been able to attend most of the, the forum yet, um, but if you have any um, observations about the groups and people that have been brought together by this edition of the World Social Forum and whether it, there are plans to build on, on the forum uh, in terms of uniting the left globally, um, or plans of any kind that are, that seem to be emerging from the, the forum. Sure, I'd be happy to uh, to give a few thoughts on that anyways. Uh, unfortunately, I, uh, I haven't been able to speak too much uh, with the organizers from the World Social Forum throughout the day today. I imagine we'll talk to them more uh, in the coming days as we kind of assess how today went, as well as the rest of the World Social Forum that will come in uh, all throughout this week. Uh, but through, throughout today, we have seen uh, a really international audience all around, uh, a lot through Latin America, of course, which is wonderful, uh, throughout Europe and Asia as well. We started this morning with a, a webinar on the people's uh, voices for disarmament in Asia uh, at 9 a.m. Berlin time. Uh, and then we've gone throughout the day uh, covering most regions of the world. Uh, one area that unfortunately I think today has been a little underrepresented uh, but hopefully we'll, we'll be hearing a lot more from um, as well in the coming days is Africa. Uh, that's one area, for example, where IPB has, uh, has been increasing our contacts. It's uh, the youngest continent. You have the, the highest percentage of, of young people uh, in Africa right now and really a lot of opportunities in there. So that's one thing I think has even been, been discussed a little bit today. Uh, of course, there's been two or three sessions going on at the same time, so I, I haven't been able to attend everything, but from the ones I was able to attend, there was, there was very clearly a, a spirit of wanting to come together uh, with, yeah, with the left uh, for peace efforts, and of course, tying peace efforts to everything that the, the uh, manifesto that we've, we've read in this session has been talking about as well, um, you know, economic uh, reorganization, where we move the money from war from nuclear weapons uh, for social causes to fix the climate emergency we're facing and plenty more. So we, we've seen that really throughout the day that there is a, a strong uh, momentum uh, for those of us uh, on the left or even in the center uh, to, to make such changes um, and to move away from war. Uh, so I think that really has been a theme and that people have been asking all throughout the day, uh, what can we do? How can we become more involved? Uh, and, and even I think uh, it was, I can't remember which session it was, but sometime this afternoon, uh, Europe time, uh, we also had uh, a call on the part of the World Social Forum to try to uh, form a group that would, would bring these issues together. So I'm sure they will be uh, organizing and releasing some more information on their plans for that moving forward. That's great. That's really helpful. Thank you, Sean. I, I would just say on, on the note, you know, the World Social Forum in, in my experience has been very left focused, um, but I'm glad Sean pointed to the, the breadth of people who are, are coming to uh, an ag agreement about the urgent need to reduce military spending, for example, and, and bring an end to uh, endless wars in the, that the United States has been waging and, and many other of its allies have been waging among other countries, um, but it is worth noting in the United States, and I, I would be interested if, if others have seen something similar in other countries, but in the United States, there are people on the right who have come to a similar conclusion that the United States, for example, has been spending hundreds of billions of dollars every year. The total military budget indeed is somewhere around $1 trillion a year on war, uh, and that this is not only unsustainable, but of course, immoral, um, and it is uh, diverting uh, tax money, uh, the money of the people uh, from far more pressing needs, while of course destroying lives uh, through the waging of war. Um, but anyway, the, the, the point is that I, I, I do think that uh, there's a, a great need to, to make strange bedfellows, as we say, um, to align uh, with people uh, who we might disagree with on other issues, um, but in given the urgency of the moment, uh, I think it's 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 a time where we do need to 
to align with anyone who would uh, want to take on the war machine, as I think many in our, or everyone in our coalition agrees upon, and, and clearly many others do as well. That was my little soapbox. Um, other questions, comments, other soapboxing? Well, David, I want to say that that coalition that you're talking about between the left and the right has actually functioned effectively at times. When uh, Obama was talking about bombing Syria uh, for crossing the red line, supposedly with the use of chemical weapons, it was the libertarians and the progressives who got together to block that. People have criticized Obama for uh, for setting a red line and then not, then not sticking to it. But if you remember the reality back then, 2014 or 2015, he, because of the mobilization, Obama was not gonna be able to get the support in Congress. Congress was about to vote that down. And I'm sorry that they didn't uh, go through with that because it would have been a major victory for the anti-war movement. Uh, so instead he just uh, decided not, not to proceed with that. But we've had that coalition on other issues as well. And maybe we can uh, keep that alive. That is a, a good example to build on. It does point though, perhaps to some of the forces arrayed against people in that sort of a coalition or others um, who have uh, bound together to try to reduce the size of the US military budget military budgets in other countries, um, or the forces that would be arrayed against, for example, the global compact proposal that, that Harry was outlining. But of course, there, there are people making billions of dollars every year on the system as it now exists. Corporations who would be rather opposed, I think, to, to Harry's proposal for reorienting work, um, the corporations that make tens of billions of dollars every year on the on war spending. Um, so I, I wonder if anyone has thoughts about what we do in the face of, of corporate power, uh, whether connected to war or connected to other parts of the capitalist system. How do we account for this power and, and, and begin to chip away at it? Well, I'll just say that the, my, the main point of uh, of my position was that um, we need to come together as a left oriented uh, uh, section of humanity and constantly um, uh, knock away, hit away at um, why competition uh, over survival is undoing us and do it intellectually, do it uh, uh, um, with, with reason, as I, as I think I've done here, and, and it can be done. So we need to be willing to, to take on the intellectual um, vision that, uh, that makes life, that can make life possible on this planet, which what we're facing right now, we do not have a future. Literally, we do not have a future. Water is going to be depleted all over this planet as if it hasn't already. Um, and I know it is to a large degree. Thank you, Harry. I wonder if, if any other members of the, the coalition or anyone else in the, the audience wants to share any I, thoughts? Yeah, I, I think, um... You know, I mean, we've seen some of it, right? In the last year, uh, we saw the Amazon workers go on strike this morning uh, in New York, right? The strike, uh, Hunt, Hunt Point strikers? Hunt's Point, yeah, Hunt's Point. They, Hunt's Point, they won. And so, yeah, one thing that I, I think that we sometimes ignore or we actually expect the workers, um, those in different um, or manual labor or different socioeconomic status to take most of the hit. And they're the ones to the ones who are to do all the labor yet again on behalf of all of us. And I think so it's also highlighting and amplifying those struggles, but also taking responsibility in our own roles and our own professional roles on being a little bit more, um, you know, not just 
creating awareness, but also uh, challenging our own institutions, right? It, it can't just be the work, the workers who are going to fight the capitalists. Yes, very good point, very good point. Thank you, Rhonda. Yes, anyone wanna build on that? Yes, yes. Um, Luis, por favor, habla en español. Muy buenas tardes. ¿Me escuchan? Sí, sí. Ah, muchas gracias por la invitación y David, muy gentil por haber aceptado mi solicitud de intervenir en este eh, evento tan importante. Quiero referirme solamente a tres puntos muy rápidos en, de Colombia. El primero, que en Colombia existen siete bases militares estadounidenses y a los miembros militares que participan de Estados Unidos en Colombia no se les aplica el derecho interno no pueden ser juzgados en Colombia. Han cometido violaciones y masacres. Han violado niñas menores de edad de 12, 14, 15 años y no han sido posible procesarlos en Colombia porque dentro de los acuerdos que hicieron con el gobierno de Álvaro Uribe Vélez fue el que ellos no serían procesados por ningún delito común o político que cometan en Colombia. Esa es la primera parte. Un momento, Luis. Um, I don't know if anyone's Spanish is better than mine. I can try to offer a quick translation. And unless anyone has greater fluency and feel free if, if anyone. Um, so Luis, thanks everyone for the chance to uh, make an intervention um, and uh, wanted to make three points. The first, that he just outlined uh, was that in Colombia, there are seven US military bases, he said, um, and members of, of the US military um, op occupying those bases. Um, and problematically, the laws, internal laws of Colombia do not apply to these members of the US military. And they've committed numerous violations, crimes, um, massacres, he mentioned, um, and I think uh, rape, I, I, I miss sort of toward the end, um, uh, including uh, against peop minors, uh, people under the age of 12. Okay. El segundo punto es que la extrema derecha en Colombia viene asesinando a líderes sociales, a líderes eh, campesinos, populares, indígenas, estudiantiles, dirigentes de organizaciones gremiales, sindicales, feministas, defensores de derechos humanos y de la naturaleza, de LGTBI, activistas sociales, líderes de oposición, docentes, intelectuales, sindicalistas, agrupaciones de vendedores ambulantes, defensores del agua y de los territorios sometidos a la explotación mineroenergética por corporaciones extractivistas norteamericanas. Asesina también a luchadores por la sustitución de cultivos ilícitos y defensores de la restitución de tierras aprobadas en el Acuerdo de Paz, miembros de los pueblos originarios luchadores por los derechos ancestrales y excombatientes de la FARC. Okay, I, I may not uh, remember each of the, the groups that, that Luis uh, outlined importantly, um, but he said that the, the far right in Colombia has been assassinating uh, a number of groups um, social leaders, uh, campesinos, um, uh, 
uh, indigenous members of indigenous groups, students, uh, members of unions, feminists, environmentalists, activists of many other kinds, um, leaders of the opposition, intellectuals, uh, uh, defenders of environmental rights, uh, among um, disability rights activists, among others. El año pasado hubo 80 masacres, 80 masacres y asesinaron 340 personas de las que enuncié anteriormente. In the last year, uh, there were, I believe, 80 massacres and did you say 300, more than 300 people were assassinated, más que 300. 80 masacres y 340 de los dirigentes que enuncié anteriormente. 340 people killed in the 80 massacres. En este año han asesinado 19 dirigentes. Entre ellos, cinco firmantes de la paz. Han habido en estos 23 días, 20, 23 días han habido cinco masacres. This year alone, in the just 23, last 23 days, uh, there have been assassinations of 19 leaders, including five signatories of the peace agreement in Colombia, I believe. Um, and uh, there have been five massacres in the last 23 days at the beginning of this year. Finalmente, Respecto al COVID en Colombia, han ha habido más de dos millones de personas atacadas por el COVID, de las cuales hay 50 mil fallecidos. La salud en Colombia es privada. El Estado no apoya a la mayoría de la población contaminada por el COVID. Esto ha llevado a que en este momento en Colombia el 95% de las camas de las unidades de cuidados intensivos estén copadas y haya ya personas que mueren en sus casas. Un momento. Um, so in the, the last point, uh, the situation of COVID in Colombia is very grave. Um, more than 2 million cases of COVID in Colombia. Um, I, I think I missed how many have, have died, but importantly, um, public uh, health care is private in Colombia. Uh, most people don't have access to care. And now currently 95% of the beds in intensive care units in hospitals in Colombia are occupied. Y el gobierno, con medidas dictatoriales, solamente han favorecido a las grandes entidades financieras. Han fortalecido al gran comercio y a la gran industria. A la población menos favorecida, a los desempleados y vendedores ambulantes, no les llega apoyo del Estado. So the, the government currently is favoring the large corporations, the industrialists, the large industrial firms, the banks, um, and not providing support for unemployed individuals, for people um, who, uh, uh, who run informal businesses on the streets. Muchas gracias. Yo soy el presidente de la Asociación Americana de Juristas de la Rama Colombia. La Asociación Americana de Juristas 
tiene estatuto consultivo en Naciones Unidas, en el ECOSOC, en Nueva York y en Ginebra. Somos 27 países de América que conformamos la Asociación Americana de Juristas y yo represento a Colombia. Es una defensora de derechos humanos, de derechos de la naturaleza y, por supuesto, de los uh, defensores de los abogados que defienden las víctimas del conflicto. Muchas gracias por su atención. Muchas, muchas gracias. Yes. Tú. Thank you. Luis, thank you so much. Uh, just quickly, um, uh, Luis is the, the president of the Association of, uh, of um, Lawyers and um, uh, of, of the Americas. Uh, and uh, he, the organization represents lawyers who defend human rights, environmental rights, um, and people who have been victims of violent conflicts. Uh, you can find out more information about the Asociación Americana de Juristas um, at, uh, and I'll provide the information in the chat box for people who are watching live, but www.asociacionamericanadejuristas um, and we'll also put that information on our website so that people can learn more. Our website again is covidglobalsolidarity.org, www.covidglobalsolidarity.org. We've already gone beyond our allotted time, although we do, according to Sean, have more time than we initially thought. Um, Want to just see if there are any final questions, comments of any kind that anyone would like to share? Yeah, um, I, I, I mean, one thing I wanted to comment on, and I think it's very important uh, given your, the talk you'll be giving soon is uh, the first comment uh, from Lewis on, uh, on the basis and what happens. And I think for me, at least as, as somebody who's an ethnographer and who always looks about at the community. I think this is really important. And of course, we heard it from Sunshine um, and her colleague as well about what happens. And I think the impact. I grew up in a base free um, Arab, Gulf, Arab Gulf state. We didn't have bases and then revisited and then all of them have bases. And what's interesting is Bahrain was the most interesting of all the bases because uh, that's where all the American, from the American perspective, the it's the most fun, it's the freest, it's the friendliest, but also that's also where they wreak the most havoc and have zero uh, repercussions. So they get, they go out at night, drink, beat up people, do whatever they want, and then they run back to the base and um, nobody ever goes to, as can enter the base or prosecute them or do anything. And so I think this is a really important um, comment and I think I, I'm really looking forward uh, to your, uh, your presentation um, on your book, uh, David. So. Thank you, Rhonda. Yes, the, the dynamics that Luis described in Colombia that, that have been seen as well as the ones in the, in the Persian Gulf, the Arabian Gulf um, are, are ones that are global and, and that sunshine and and Naomi, of course, can sadly speak to uh, the same sorts of pattern of crimes and uh, including rape and murder and accidents uh, that have taken lives and injured lives grievously are patterns that one sees wherever there are US military bases around the world. And for that matter, often foreign bases belonging to any nation, but uh, the case is that 90 to 95% of the world's foreign military bases belong to the United States currently. Sunshine, would you like to say something, Sunshine? You need to unmute. Uh, thank you very much uh, for um, I, we are very honored to take part in this social for, forum, World Social Forum, and I could hear the uh, many places, situation, and especially Colombia's uh, very serious situation. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'd like to uh, have solidarity, uh, strong solidarity, and to make the world a better 
in the happier world. Naomi is very happy to uh, talk uh, with people all over the world. Arigato. Thank you. Thank you so much, Arigato. For people who want to learn more about the or and get involved in the struggle in Okinawa against US military bases, is there a website that we can share with people? Or where, where can people learn more or get in contact with, with you or, or Naomi? Sunshine, is, is, there, is there a good website where people can learn more information? Uh, website, uh, yes. Um, we have actually in Okinawa, we have many um, the movement and one is to protect Ogura Bay uh, against the new military base. So we have uh, 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 the, this website the, about uh, Ogura Bay, protect Ogura Bay's website. Mm -hmm. And also we uh, to, we are um, fighting against uh, uh, the pollution of all Okinawa. So Professor Yoshikawa, Hideki Yoshikawa is uh, um, organizing. So there are so many websites. So later I will let you know. Thank you. That would be wonderfully helpful. We will again, uh, post information about the Okinawan anti-base struggle, including the struggle in Hinoko and Ora Bay on our website, the covidglobalsolidarity.org website, in addition to the information about the uh, Colombian uh, and Pan-American Association of, of, of Lawyers and uh, Juristas. Um, anyone else want to? Offer some final words. Well, I would I would thank David for organizing this and uh, everyone else that is involved and has been involved. Appreciate that. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Thank you for organizing, David. Thank you, and thank you, everyone. And thank you, Sunshine. Thank you very much. Me, for staying up. Thank you, or waking up. I don't <laughs> remember what. <I> <laughs> Thank you everyone for getting involved. Mil gracias a Luis Dusan. Uh, thank you, Arigato Gazamas. Um, thank you for everyone who came <laughs> thank thank We look forward to, I, I, to work together. Harry, did you want to say? I, I'm looking at the clock behind Naomi and it's the, it looks like it's uh, uh, six o'clock there now, uh, the, the clock. Yeah, it's, it's a clock. Six thirty now. Um, Irene, it's like almost midnight in in Greece. So <laughs> let Irene go to sleep soon. Um, but thank you to everyone. Um, we look forward to to working together. And again, encourage people to visit our website where you can provide your information uh, to make sure that you're kept up to date about our future events and 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 programs. So thank you again to everyone, and we wish you good morning, good night, wherever you are in the world. Thank you, everyone. Muchas gracias, Luis. Muchas gracias, Luis. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias.